What's up guys? In this video, what I want to do is cover three basic synthetic division problems. So therefore, if you fell asleep during class or maybe you have a test the next day, or you just need a quick little refresher, hopefully going through these three examples is going to help solidify your understanding of synthetic division. So whenever we want to do synthetic division, it's really important to make sure that our divisor is going to be linear. Now, obviously, since this video is about synthetic division, all of these problems, you can see that my divisor is going to be linear. Now, the next thing we're going to want to do is create what we call our kind of synthetic division kind of bar. And what that's going to be is kind of look like the long division kind of bar, it's going to be, but kind of like upside down. Now on this outside here, we're going to want to put our value K. Now to be able to find K, what you're going to do is take your linear divisor and just go ahead and set it equal to zero. So X minus three is equal to zero. Once we get into more advanced topics with dealing with synthetic division, you'll have a better understanding of this value K. But for right now, I just want you to take your divisor and then set equal to zero and then solve for X. X equals three in this case, and that's gonna be your value K. So you're gonna put that number right there. Then the next thing you're gonna to wanna to do is go ahead and take the coefficients of your polynomial. Now remember, if there's no number in front of your X squared, that's always gonna be a one, right? Not zero, because zero times anything is zero. So it won't be zero times X squared because that'd be zero. So therefore that's going to be a one. So what I'm gonna simply do here is now just take a one, a two and a negative five. I'm just gonna now place them inside of this box. So we have a three on the outside and then one, two and negative five, which are the coefficients of my polynomial in my numerator on the inside. Now, the main thing you're gonna to wanna to remember for synthetic division is like the first number, it's kind of like a freebie. I kind of, I don't know, think about it like the price is right. Come on down. You always get the first one is free. So that's gonna be like our freebie. So we just go ahead and drop that down. All right, so therefore one is gonna be our first answer here. And then what you're gonna do is multiply in the diagonal, add on the vertical. So in this case, I have one times three. You see how that's like a diagonal? So one times three is going to be a three. So you put that in the next column. Now you can see that these are vertically aligned. Two plus three is going to give me a five. And then again, we multiply in the diagonal. Five times three is going to be a 15. And in this case, you can see that's going to be a 10. Now this is going to be what we call our remainder. So whatever the last number is, is always going to be your remainder. Then if you remember like in a polynomial, we have like our square term, we have our linear term, and then we have our constant. So what we're simply gonna do is just kind of work our way backwards. So if we have our remainder, the next term is going to be our constant. And the term after that is going to be what we call our linear term. So I'm just gonna write an X, but really what that means is like, that's the coefficient of your linear term. Okay, so this is where synthetic division gets a little confusing because remember synthetic division is just a tool. Unlike long division, when we actually divide, we get the answer. Well, synthetic division doesn't do that. What synthetic division does is give us the coefficients, the constant and the remainder. We have to kind of put the pieces back together to find our quotient. So when I take X squared plus two X minus five divided by X minus three, I don't get one, five, 10, right? I get a polynomial. But as you can see how I listed this, I get the coefficient of the linear term, the constant, as well as the remainder. So therefore I can just rewrite this as a X plus five, and the way we're gonna write the remainder is gonna be over the divisor. So plus a 10 over a X minus three. And there you go, ladies and gentlemen, that is going to be your answer. So you can see that X minus three does not evenly divide into X squared plus two X minus five. Now, just a quick little bonus tip, like you could actually probably do this problem in your head, because what you hopefully notice is the X squared plus two X minus five is not factorable right? So since it's not factorable, we know X minus three is not a factor of that polynomial. Hence, it's not going to evenly divide into it. So therefore the fact that we have a remainder kind of makes some sense. All right. Now this next example, let's go ahead and set up everything again. Now you might say, well, Mr. McGillian, why do I need to set the denominator equal to zero and then solve when it's just really the opposite sign? And yes, a lot of times that is a trick that you can go and work with. But once we get into more difficult problems, which we will do, you'll notice that that's not always going to work. But for right now, if you just want to say, well, if you just use the opposite sign, that's going to work. In this case, it will work because when I set X minus two equal to zero, I'm going to get X equals two. So hopefully you're kind of following me with that and you're good to go. Okay. So now I got my nice little synthetic division box. Now I'm just going to take the coefficients for my term as well as my constant. Now, just remember these are easy problems, right? So there's not going to be any gaps, but if you do have a missing term, if there wasn't an X squared, therefore you would want to use zero as a placeholder. But in this video, we're going to keep everything basic. Just remember the first term. Come on. Come on down, that's a freebie. So that one goes all the way down. We multiply on the diagonal, add on the vertical. So two times two is going to be four. That goes to the next column. Negative seven plus three is going to be a negative three. Negative three times negative two is going to be a negative six. 13 plus negative six is going to be a positive seven. Seven times two is going to be a positive 14. So now what I want you to recognize is I have a zero for remainder. That tells us that this divisor X minus two evenly divides into the numerator. 
right? Kind of crazy because you kind of look at it and it looks very confusing, but that's exactly what having no remainder means, right? When I have like 14 divided by seven, like that has a remainder of zero because seven evenly divides into 14, right? But five does not evenly divide into 14. That would have a remainder. So now let's go ahead and rewrite my answer back as actually the proper quotient, right? So again, whenever we're doing this, we always know the last number is always going to remainder. Sometimes it's a number, sometimes it's zero. But again, that just means that your divisor evenly divides into the numerator. The next term over is going to be your constant, right? So we have the constant and then we're going to have the coefficient of our linear term. And then we're going to have the coefficient of our quadratic. Now, again, I'm only doing three examples here. So if you had more numbers, you would just go to X cubed, X to the fourth, X to the fifth. It really doesn't matter how far you need to go. You just keep on following the pattern. So this final answer is going to be a two X squared minus a three X plus a seven. And again, we don't need to put a remainder, but again, if you did like a remainder over the divisor, you would just get zero and you'd see that it's just extra. Now, one last thing I just want to kind of like highlight because this is really important moving on for later content. If X minus two evenly divides into this polynomial, two X squared minus three X plus seven, what that also tells us is that X minus two times a two X squared minus a three X plus seven equals a two X cubed minus seven X squared plus a 13 X minus 14. So sometimes you might be asked to go ahead and rewrite it as a product. And that's exactly what you'd want to be able to do. When you can find your quotient, you can rewrite it as a product to equal your numerator, right? And again, it's just the, really the same idea. Like if I had a 14 divided by seven, well, that answer is two, right? And we can also rewrite that as a product, right? I can say a seven times two is equal to 14. So exactly what I just did here is exactly what I did there with the polynomials. I think it's really important for you to understand as you start expanding into more difficult problems. But again, we're keeping things simple. So let's do one more example here to really make sure that we have a good understanding of synthetic division. And hey, if you wanna pause the video, give it a shot on your own and then check your answer with me. I'm all for it. If you're not going to play that game, you just want me to go ahead and do the problem, then yeah, hey, let's get at it, right? So I do a lot of math problems. So I have a negative one. It's going to be on the outside, right? You could set X plus one um, equal to zero, but again, hopefully you recognize you're going to get a negative one. I'm going to take my coefficients, right? And remember, we're going to have a one here. Um, there's no place values. I have everything here. So I have four, three, two, one, right? And my constant. So I don't need to put a zero in for a placeholder. And I'm just going to take all the coefficients. So three, negative two, one and a five, right? Because I'm going to notice there's a positive one there as well. Okay. So again, remember the freebie always works, always for the first term, bring down the one, that's going to be a one. One times negative one is going to give me a negative one and three plus negative one add on the vertical is going to give me a negative three. Negative times a negative is a positive. So that's going to be a positive three. Negative two plus three is going to be a one. No, yes, yes. <laughs> one times negative one is going to be a negative one. That's going to give me a zero. Zero times negative one is going to give me a negative one. And five plus negative one is going to give me a four. Hmm, interesting. So again, remember, we always start with our remainder. Then we have constant, linear, quadratic, and then we get to our cubic, right? So again, my final answer here is an x cubed minus a three x squared plus a X. Now, again, in this case, I don't have a constant, right? But I do have a remainder. So therefore that's going to be a plus a four all over my divisor, which is over a X plus one. So if you're interested in moving on to some more difficult examples, go ahead and check out the next video I have for you here. And if you're looking for more examples on synthetic division or more examples for me teaching and more in depth with my resources, check out information on my courses and additional videos I have for you in the description down below. I'll see you guys in the next video. Cheers.